Hey guys, what's up? It's Amit here. Welcome to the club and welcome again to my YouTube channel. Today, I have a very interesting topic that I want to talk to you guys about. Personal finance. And some realistic advice that you may want to take. Right? I am not professional. I am basically giving you this advice based on my own understanding and take it however you like please I am not responsible uh, please do not try to sue me because this content or this education that you're getting is free and it's and as anything with free right you should take it as a grain of salt all right let's get started dues for personal finance tips for most people so about 95 percent of the general population will fall in into this guide that I'm about to go through. Do start save early, right? As soon as you start getting your first paycheck, start putting some money. Um, if you have not read the Babylon, right? The rich, richest man in Babylon, they really go in this part. Of start saving early. If you put in a little bit of your money in saving every single paycheck eventually it will grow so where you can do a lot of thing with it try to diversify this is really for um let's say you put in a saving account and that you know well most of the saving accounts are fine but if you are investing in stock market you should definitely put in more than one company like for example Hearts right now, they just filed a bankruptcy, so your stock just went to essentially zero. Um, not really, but yes. So if you don't diversify, right, eventually companies are down, will have declined sale, and they will have to either reinvent themselves to do something about that. If not, then they will go out of the business. So definitely think about diversification. Invest in stock, passive fund ETF. What it means is that um, there's two types of strategy here. You have active strategy and passive strategy. Active strategy is basically where somebody's trying to beat the market. And as you know, you can never predict or beat the market. And most of the time, people are wrong um, because there are so many factors. So try to be in more or less passive income. And also, you don't want to have another job. Let that leave that for the professional people, or unless you have a lot of money, and you can do a lot of uh, research and so on. So try to be more of a passive investor, like I am. Most of my things are passive. I just put in my money, or even the stocks I buy. I know they are very well, and very well in terms of known brand, and they have money. They can survive, and they're back balance are good they have good clientele right those kind of thing um, tax planning well this is really comes to when you are about to retire but taxes do play major part in your investing um, as you will eventually learn that I, let's say you are buying a stock um, if you sell it within a year you will have paid different tax versus if you held it for one year you will pay different tax Versus, let's say you had 401k, do you when do you take it out, or do you have more income or less income? So that's why you, I'm not sure at the beginning if this applies more, but you should still be thinking about this. Prudent use of debt. Don't try to get in debt. As, try to avoid as much as possible, um, unless they are good debt. Like, for example, everybody needs a house. And you can get cheaper interest rate and it makes sense the area that you are in then yes or maybe going to get education like i am i have a, a reasonable debt security for a loved one life insurance this is more like if you are married so i'm not going to cover this because i am not don't uh day trading or gamble day trading is basically you are doing very short period of training trading at usually at the beginning of the market or at the end and you look at the charts up and down and you try to predict where the candle will be and I'm not a professional in this 
but I would never recommend and if you ask any professional investors most people will say to stay away from this day trading simply because you lose a lot more than you actually win so it's like a gambling right start saving early here's a chart that you see um, interest rate right number of years future value of $100 if you start at zero and based on the percentage if you have return what that hundred dollar would be worth right eventually it would after 20 year if the highest bit 15 percent somewhere close to sixteen hundred dollars so you can see real power of compounding that's what is this picture is portraying and you should really think about starting early again diversification helps you to reduce risk like i mentioned don't put all your eggs in one basket right if you have it and then you fall all of the eggs will be cracked and you won't have any more egg to make your omelet okay so here's an example some Lehman Brothers employees suffered because they invested all their wealth in Lehman so this is a great example where um, Lehman Brother basically employees thought they were you know it was a great company you know, but they just didn't know because they were working there all of them bought their all of their stocks to the company and when the company went bust right nobody had any money so that's why don't put everything in one why offer higher return over the long term so let's look at this chart end of year 1990 1899 dollars log scale equity bond and bill your bills were, will be worth less right so hundred dollars eventually worth less your bonds essentially tries to beat the inflation so somewhere around that but they usually stay very close whereas the equities are your stocks and other market right you would see a different trend so that's why for higher return over long period of time investing is not for short period of time stocks are risky for short term so keep they are very like if you look at the I remember in Robin Hood um, in back in March I had about ten thousand um, dollar my portfolio went to lowest like three thousand or four thousand dollar I started panic I I waited out I did sold eventually for as soon as it hit eight thousand dollar I took two thousand dollar loss it's simply because I needed the money and I was comfortable with taking out the money but don't do that right as soon as anything happen do not try to go to your do not treat your your investment as a saving account right you should always have emergency money um, I did have emergency money but my what happened was I kind of lost my job and pandemic happened and that whole story and it was very hard to get a job so I wanted basically security um, extra money line up just in case now I just found the money I um, mean money a job so it's fine now so keep at least six months worth of monthly expense in safe asset like saving account treasury bill and similar treasury bill is like another word for bond that you can have and here's your money rate of return a couple times you have seen negative versus positives okay Stock in some countries have done worse even in long term. It's very important to when you look. This is a Japan Nikkei. To in look at actual companies and the economy as a whole that you want to invest in and how they are performing. If you look at one year, they did worse. Two year, five year, ten year max. Every year they're going down. Then I don't know if that's company maybe you should be buying into. Because any company you are buying into, you are the owner of that percentage or fraction. Maybe that one share, but out of the million, you are one million in one share, right? Of owner of that company is just a crowdsourced. Well, not really, but yes, a bunch of you own that company. And would you want to own a company that is doing that poorly? I don't, I wouldn't, unless you really think they can, they can come up. Check your 401k plan or broker available option. Like for example, when you 
when you get a new job um, if you don't choose anything the company most likely like vanguard or tiro price or some other fidelity right they automatically put you in what they call um um target retirement fund those are good because they are less than one percent of the fees but sometimes you can get a higher return if you just simply take a look at the options that is available and maybe look at the ones that are performing better than the one that they put you in right look into that choose smp or total stock market return these are etfs choose any fund with a low expense ratio of 0 0.1 right try to be try not to pay a lot of fees because if you're going to be invested in 30 years or 20 years in your lifetime then really fees is our main your concern and rather than the actually going up because eventually they will compound some well-known provider of low-cost minimum ETFs, right? Vanguard, BlackRock. I've never heard of it. Neither did I have. I, I only have experience with Vanguard and Fidelity in this case, but and Tiro Price, and there was a SunTrust Bank. Yeah, for a while. Um, tax planning, contribute to 401k, 403 IRA. Some employer offer matching contribution, like my employer offers three and a half percent so if you go over that four percent so i try to max it out as much as i can so right now i have Roth and the other one and i put in about five five percent ten percent because i can afford to do that so you get max amount of money if you work for government or non-profit might have 457 plan right this is state self-explanatory if you're in that field limit um check your limit irs limit Basically, you can put up to $6,000 tax-free money if your employer doesn't offer it. And you can get one of these Roth IRA efficiently with any broker, uh, M1, Vanguard, you name it, they have it. Not all debts are bad. Uh, I covered that at the beginning. As long as the investment use is prudent, is, it should be fine. In certain situation taking on debt might be unavoidable right because for my example eventually i will going to buy a house i have bought many cars so far i spend a lot of money i guess buying car now I, the car that i have right now i actually really like it uh, hopefully i don't get an accident or i don't like to keep an accident car they end up giving you a lot more problem than they are worth but if i don't um i do plan to keep my car and education right i'm very big into education Hopefully I can one day put um, in go high as I can, but uh, right now I'm doing my second master, so I had to take out loan, car, and eventually house. These are unavoidable um, unless you have money. Try to avoid personal loan, credit card debt to extend as possible. Credit card is, I'll give you a full example. Because of credit card, I was able to go to school, let's put it that way, because there was a semester that I kind of maxed out on my student loan and I didn't know how, where else to turn in and I needed the money and I just simply used my credit card um, that was a bad choice but I did it because I knew I could uh, in about two months I could refinance it with consolidation I was going to do that anyway so I maxed it out paid my semester fees and whatever else I ate at the cafeteria I mean you know when you go to the university you get hungry after taking three hour long lecture or you worked whole day in my case i worked whole day and then i would go to the campus hour later you know that's like almost six o'clock then i was really hungry eat my dinner then seven by the time it's seven o'clock i went to the class so i had my day most of the time i had my dinner literally at the university for whichever days i actually went might be unavoidable in case of emergency so you still want to have have a line of i just got a line of credit it's very nice it's, they work like a credit card but uh, you can actually get cheaper rate like for example right now i'm in virginia um you can be a member of virginia credit union and they are offering five percent apr uh, personal line of credit so it's better to have those i mean I, I don't need the money right now but i have it just in case if i ever need to touch it i have easy cheaper access to money rather than me hitting credit card so i would like if something were to happen i would hit my saving count first then i would go to my personal line of credit and then i would probably think of 
credit card for larger debt. For a smaller one, is I mean, like if you're going out, you can swipe your credit card as long as you pay that off at the end of the month. Um, then it's fine. If you have this, pay this first. <laughs> so they do add up very fast because that 15% it's a lot of money um get a life insurance that's people who are married and have kids so i am not experiencing this please watch somebody else's youtube on that again don't do day trading 90 percent of the day trader can't beat passive investing this is actually true like if you look at warner buffett he is essentially the best passive investor and many of them you don't do much work and you know, you're getting money almost for free, a little bit less than what active trader might make. But then again, how much you're not put doing any work. So unless you're that good, that genius and who have actually gone, there are classes after classes that you can take. And then even then I wouldn't recommend it because look at this way. Somebody has to lose money for you to gain money. And how long do you think you can keep your um winning streak before you be the one so you know it's a gamble Cons um day trading consume time distracts you from job and businesses create lots of stress effects mental health strange relationship high tax rate compared to passive income i already covered that year versus one year versus short term versus long term long term always worth it all right and just don't do it warner buffett not to get rich by day trading he does buy boring stuff long-term investment diversification begin early these are the three things that warner buffett did and look at how successful he is so look into his method if you still don't want to try your luck limit to five to ten percent of your total investment never bring credit card to a casino <laughs> All right, guys, I hope this information was helpful to you. Let me know what you guys think. Thank you.